Hi friends, welcome to my channel. Welcome back. Welcome welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. If you have never seen my face before, my name is Erin and I love to give motivation to clean. I like to do grocery hauls and day in the life videos. Just, um, I don't know, I just really enjoy making videos for YouTube. So if you enjoy what you see, definitely don't forget to subscribe. Um, in today's video, it is going to be a two-day clean with me. I cleaned my entire house from top to bottom. We have a four-bedroom, four-bathroom home, and we had guests coming this weekend. And so I am taking all of the bed sheets off of all of the kids. We have a eight, 10, and 14-year-old, and I am putting all of their bed sheets into the washing machine. And as they are being washed, I am going to take everything upstairs, put all of their clothes away. Uh, in my son's room, I'm actually hanging up a lot of his pictures and uh, his trophies and that kind of thing. And I'm gonna just tidy up the whole upstairs, vacuum, and then remake their beds. And generally they do these things, but of course when I'm filming a cleaning video, I typically tend to do these things. So I went ahead and cleaned up their bedrooms and made them nice and pretty. And I also went into their bathrooms and scrubbed them down nice and clean. You have seen a thousand lovers meet. You have seen a thousand times. If you are new to my channel, you probably don't know, but we just moved into our house about two months ago. So um, I haven't really decorated many of the kids' bedrooms. I did my daughter's bedroom about two weeks ago, and actually in this video I will be decorating my oldest son's bedroom. So this is my youngest son's bedroom, and I haven't hung up any of his artwork or anything on his walls. So that may be my next video. I need to get some rugs for their rooms as well. And my eight-year-old is also, you know, the baby of the family, and he tends to be a little bit more lazy than the other two. So his room is generally always a mess, <laughs> of course. So I'm going back and I have to organize his books and a lot of his clothes were just hanging out on the floor. So I grabbed everything that I could find and I put it on his bed, put all of the clothes on the hangers and put it into the closet. And then in a little bit, you will see me vacuuming the closet as well as obviously the floor. And I'm just trying to organize everything so that when the bed, the bedding is finished, I can come back in and just make their beds and it looks nice and organized. Now I had a lot of issues with like shading and shadows just because I haven't quite figured out the perfect angles to film in the bedrooms. His bedroom only has one window and if it's totally open it gets very hot in that room. So I have blackout blinds up and if they're closed it's much cooler but the lighting is terrible and you just can't see anything. So I end up leaving them open so that I have a little bit of light but at the same time it starts to get hot in there. So. Um, you'll have to excuse like the flashes of light because it kind of gets lighter and then it gets darker and it's the camera's just trying to figure out what to do at that time. i 
cleaning his bedroom, I realized that my son's bathroom hadn't really been scrubbed down for a while since we've moved into the house. I did thoroughly clean the bathrooms when we first moved in because that was right at the beginning of the coronavirus and I wanted to make sure that everything was sterilized and sanitary. So I did go in and clean down all the toilets and all of the sinks and the bathtubs and everything. So everything was like hopefully virus free, but I did realize that I haven't actually gone back in for another deep cleaning since we've moved in. So that was what I was doing is I took a water vinegar thieves um, thieves oil as well as lemon oil that's what that mixture was and I was like saturating the toilet the bathtub and the sink so that when I was finished with my oldest son's room I could go back in and start scrubbing it um, I was hoping that it would kind of like loosen up some of the um, you know the dirt and particles that were in there and make it a little bit easier on on me scrubbing the bathroom down not to take it too far though it's hard not getting tempted calling you up to see how you've been cause don't i miss you and all those things we did back then Some of you may also be noticing that the vacuum I'm using is not a typical vacuum. It's not a Dyson or a Shark or any of those more popular brands. This is actually a rainbow vacuum and I got really super lucky in getting this vacuum because we moved to California and I didn't have a vacuum at all and I had sold um, a couple of items when we were living in Japan and I had some cash on me and there was a lady whose daughters we're not interested in using the rainbow vacuum because it is kind of tedious. It has, you know, a bowl of water that all of the dirt goes into. And when you have to dump it, you have to go outside or put it in the toilet. And if you put it in the toilet, it's going to clog up the toilet more than likely. So more, more times than not, you need to go outside and dump it. But let me tell you, this is the most sanitary and allergy friendly vacuum that I have ever used. And I do have a Dyson as well. However, the suction on the rainbow is 10 times stronger than the suction on the Dyson. So when I really needed to get in and get down the, you know, get out the dirt from the baseboards and the carpet, the Dyson versus the rainbow, the rainbow definitely outshined the Dyson on that one. It was just such a huge difference. But I also realized after watching a couple of YouTube videos that the Dyson, I'm sorry, that the Rainbow has a lot of really cool features on it. Um, I've learned that you can actually blow up an air mattress or um, you can use it to like blow off a computer or a keyboard or the back of your truck or whatever it is. Um, it has a really cool feature where it actually blows air out. Um, I just found that out probably two days ago, so I was super excited about that. But just wanted to tell you guys in this video, I do go through the entire house with the rainbow vacuum. And it is a little bit cumbersome because it's so big and you have to like pull it with you. But it was definitely worth it to get like the deep down dirty messes that I had to clean up. After watching this video back, I am 100% going to go to the store and get a nice pair of rubber gloves because I'm realizing how disgusting it is to wash these toilets and these sinks and these bathtubs with no gloves on. And yes, I did wash my hands afterwards. I did make sure to sanitize everything afterwards, um, but just watching myself clean these toilet parts it was just so gross and this brush is a dollar tree brush and it did not do the job like i wanted it to it was okay for the time being but i did end up going to costco and getting a new toilet brush that i'm actually kind of excited about as much as you can be about a toilet brush um but i i did go back and get a nicer brush that i can use to really like hard clean the toilet and the solution that I'm putting into 
the toilet brush basin is that water and vinegar mix and it just kind of helps sanitize the brush after you're done when you put the brush back into the little receptacle it kind of helps sanitize it when it's not being used Most of the time when I'm cleaning and you see that clear white bottle that has the water, vinegar, it has thieves or tea tree oil and lemon, um, I use that more often because I have more access to the vinegar and the oils, but I will go through, I, I can actually use the same solution on my mirrors, but in this case I was just using regular Windex. And I just know that it's gonna get a really good thorough clean and that it's gonna be sanitizing. Uh, but I normally go in with my Thieves Cleaner, which is a white bottle. I don't know how many ounces it is, but it is about $22 for the entire bottle. And one cap full of that solution can go into those spray bottles. And then you fill it up with water and that is one entire um, bottle of cleaning solution so when you get the thieves cleaner it is about a dollar per bottle that you're cleaning because that cleaning solution will last me a good six months if not longer um, but I do use it for a lot of things so it has been super helpful and I know it's um, you know sanitizing and doing a lot of antibacterial work in my house so and I know it's safe for my kids as well and then I'm just going in here with my e-cloth mop and I'm actually considering changing to maybe the Norwex because I've noticed that when I'm mopping with this mop, afterwards I will go back and the floor will still be kind of sticky. So I'm either not cleaning thoroughly enough or for some reason maybe the cloth hasn't been washed well. I wash it after every cycle and then air dry it. And then I will, um, you know, put it back into hot water and put it back onto my mop head. And for some reason, it just gives me this like sticky film. So I'm possibly going to try Norwex and see if that makes any difference. Um, if you have any other recommendations, let me know in the comments because I'm just not quite sure what I'm doing wrong, if I'm doing anything wrong but it just hasn't like it makes the floor feel clean at the time but afterwards when you kind of walk on it it just has this like residue left behind This is my oldest son's bedroom and I just went in and found a clean set of sheets that were in the closet. So he has kind of one of those um, platform beds, which I absolutely love. My husband is gonna build us one for our master bedroom, um, but I, I just love his bed and it was just super easy to make. So I remade his bed, I put his quilt on there, I'm tucking in the bed sheets um, or the quilt on the side and then I'm gonna go back and put on his pillows and his LA Dodgers blanket and just try and make it as tidy as possible. Will I cry? Will I leave behind broken and crumbled signs? Hiding all my roads to you. Uh oh. And if I fight, will I come to life? Calling for all your life. 
Again, this is my oldest son's room and he is completely in love with baseball. He wants to be an MLB player when he grows up. So I am taking all of his um, pictures and trophies and plaques and whatever else he has and I am finally decorating his room. <laughs> it has been, I should have done this a long time ago, but we've just, we moved into the house and then the coronavirus happened and we just couldn't get into a lot of things. I didn't have a bed. Like I had mattresses for them to sleep on, but I didn't have beds for them. I didn't have like a headboard and footboard or frames or anything. So the rooms didn't feel like complete. So once I finally got their beds and their frames, I was able to kind of like gather my thoughts and figure out where I wanted to put everything. So I am hanging up his pictures and he's got this baseball and football like shelf kind of thing and that's what I'm hanging up now and then I'm going to go and put his little Dodgers baseball and I don't remember what else I put up there, a trophy, <laughs> up on his shelves and then I'm going to hang up the rest of his like memorabilia for him, from his years in sports. But I was just finally able to get around to putting up all of his sports stuff on his wall and I was so happy because his room finally looks like a normal teenage bedroom now. Okay, so before you ask, I am totally not measuring anything. I didn't have any kind of level, I didn't have any kind of um, a tape measure or ruler or anything. I am totally eyeballing everything that I'm doing. So I kind of held it up and I looked to see if it was straight, looked to see if it looked good. I can kind of see for myself if I think it looks straight and if it doesn't, I will move it an inch or I will move it a centimeter or whatever it is. Um, I just literally put things up on the wall. I will move back and look at it and if I don't like it then I will move it. <laughs> and if I put a bunch of holes in the wall then that's what toothpaste is for. <laughs> um, but no, I totally didn't measure anything out. I am not that precise person that has to have everything perfect. I just eyeballed it and it worked out really well and I'm really proud of the way that his bedroom came out. I'm just going to apologize again for the lighting. Obviously with the blinds closed, you can't see anything. It's dark and in the bedroom, with the li even with the light on, it didn't do anything justice. So I need to learn how to adjust my angles and figure out how I can do the dusting and show it on camera without the camera like darkening out. Haven't learned that yet. I will figure it out eventually, but I'm just dusting the windows, dusting the blinds, and getting that taken care of, and then I will move on to a nice bright area.
Now that my 14 year old bedroom 14 year old bedroom is completely done I moved back into my youngest son's bedroom his bed sheets were finally finished actually I think I may have gotten these out of the closet I can't remember um, but I went back in there to go ahead and put the fitted sheet and the flat sheet and just completely make his bed so that it looks much better and then um, I'm just gonna finish up in his bedroom and then move on to my daughter's room and it's a little tragic I know I'm better off living without your love But time on again my thoughts go back to when We were crazy kids with a lot of feelings I'm Too proud to beg and too numb for stealing When I rode with you it was all downhill and Losing control was a part of that thrill A part of me still someone you don't know of but these are long days and even though you can tell there's something i can't get over I know and now i'm moving on to my youngest kids bathroom we have a like i said an eight and a ten year old the eight year old is a boy the ten year old is a girl and let me tell you that they do not know how to clean up after themselves. I thought the 14 year old's bathroom would be pretty bad, but the shower in their bathroom was not too bad. I mean, obviously they just bathe and shower and everything is mostly clean except for, you know, the mildew and whatever in the bathtub. But when I moved to their bathroom sink, there was toilet paper everywhere and clothes and toothpaste on the counter just all kinds of dirt on the the mirror and I just could not believe how bad their bathroom sink looked. I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of organizational something in place because their bathroom where the toilet is is not huge and that could have been one of the issues but just in general their bathroom was just awful. So I had to do a lot of cleaning, a lot of scrubbing and a lot of elbow grease to get that place clean. I didn't even show under the counter in this bathroom because it was awful. Uh, my daughter's 
bows. She has a huge bag of bows that she took and just tossed under that counter. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff under the counter that I need to organize, but I need to get like a plastic set of drawers to go under there so that everything can be like organized in the drawers before I just start taking everything out and reorganizing everything. So under the counter was awful, <laughs> but I just needed to make sure and get the toilet clean and sanitized and get the counters clean and sanitized because once again, I do have an eight and 10 year old sharing this bathroom and it is just not as pretty and fancy as I wanted it to be. Um, in my hand right now, I have a thing of baking soda. I am gonna go back and label that. I was just trying to get a little bit of like grit to the texture as I was cleaning the toilet and the sink so that I was actually scrubbing with some kind of abrasive that wasn't too harsh but it was still going to be a natural cleaner and that everything would still be nice and clean and sanitized and that it would smell good. I'm sure many of you have seen the trick of the toilet brush, but in case you haven't, um, the best trick that I can that I've learned with that you can do with the toilet brush is after you are finished cleaning the toilet, you are completely done. What you do is you take the lid, both lids of the toilet, you lift them up, and you put the brush against the bowl of the toilet and close the lids down onto them, and then you let the toilet brush dry. And once it is dry, then you can take the brush and put it back into the little cleaning receptacle deal. And that is how you know that it is actually dry and not, not gonna like drip the toilet solution onto the floor. So just to leave it under the toilet rim is a really smart idea. Um, otherwise, if you have any other ideas of how to, you know, maintain your toilet brush, because after you clean the toilet, it's absolutely disgusting. So. If you have any other ideas of how to store your toilet brush, definitely leave them in the comments because I am up to hearing anything. Something that will make my day Cause these memories of her won't go away They're haunting me so I can't sleep Now that I have the toilet and the counter sanitized, I go in with my Dyson vacuum. This was the easiest thing to do on this um, hardwood floor, not hardwood floor, on this tile floor. I could have used the rainbow and just switched out the head, but it was more complicated to do it that way, so I just stuck with the Dyson in here. So I used the bare, foot, the bare floor cleaner um, on the bathroom first, and then I will go back in with the e-cloth mop again and mop it and then this bathroom or this area will be completely finished. Why did she go? I met her back in 2005. It was a crooked little smile that caught my eye. Time went by and it was her and I. Still check my phone cause 
Moving into my daughter's room, I had already taken the bed sheets off of her bed as you saw in the very beginning of the video. So I'm just going through and trying to dust the blinds and I am using an e-cloth, um, just a everyday e-cloth rag and it really got a lot of the dust off of those blinds. It was completely disgusting when I was finished. But that just means that the blinds were clean and sanitized at that point. Um, so I did go in and just kind of pull the, the curtains back and I'm just going to make her bed because her sheets were clean as well. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of tidying up in her bedroom. Why did she go? Whoa. Was I supposed to know that she'd leave? Was I the naive to think that she'd be the one? Whoa. Just tell me why did she go? Now I did just redo my daughter's room about a week and a half ago, but just because I was in there and moving things around, I went ahead and used the e-cloth um, rag and just went ahead and dusted her whole dresser. This dresser is a new dresser, it's from Ikea. My husband and my son built it. And um, if you wanna see where any of those items are from, I actually have a video where I redid her bedroom and that is where I pinned most of the items that I purchased there. Um, and then I got this off of Amazon, the canopy. She absolutely loves the canopy. She feels like a little princess and she is our little princess. Um, so I went ahead and hung that back up and she is absolutely in love with this canopy. She loves the lights and canopies and everything girly and prissy and I am just loving it. My bedroom was the last bedroom that I cleaned up and I had actually the day before washed the bed sheets so I did not take the bed sheets off this day. Um, I just went ahead and pulled up the sheets and pulled up our comforter and made the bed and the reason that the comforter does not fit the bed is because it is actually I think meant for a full size bed and this bed in this picture is a queen size. Now we're in the process of getting a king size bed so I wasn't too worried about it but I just went ahead and I'm, you know, using what I have. Didn't want to go out and buy a bunch of new stuff when I was getting a new a new bed. So I'm just making the bed. I'm using the pillows and the shams. And after we get our king size bed, I'm going to be changing up the bedspread and all of the pillows and everything. So it's going to look like a completely different bedroom. And I'm so excited to make over my own bedroom. And last but not least, I went in to take care of our bathroom. Uh, I did do the bathroom downstairs in the hallway. We do have four bathrooms total. We have three 
full bathrooms and then we have one half bath. Um, the two bed bathrooms upstairs between the kids, we have the master bathroom and then we have a hallway bathroom. But because I've already showed you, showed me cleaning three other bathrooms, I thought it was pointless to show you cleaning a fourth bathroom because it just becomes redundant. So pretty much I do everything in the same bathroom. I clean out the counters, I wash the mirrors, then I go into the bathtub and clean that and then pretty much mop the floor. So. This is the last bathroom you will see me cleaning. Um, I just wanted to show you guys that I'm cleaning all areas of the house, but there was no point in doing the fourth bathroom. I did go in and thoroughly clean the bathtub and the shower when we first moved in. Like I said, this was right at the beginning of this this COVID mess. So I did make sure and sanitize all of the surface areas when we first moved in, but I hadn't cleaned it since then. And I probably take one bath a week. So it's probably been used about six to eight times since then. So I did wanna go in with my cleaning solution and like thoroughly like scrub down the bathtub because there was like bath bomb residue and soap residue and you know when you shave your legs and all that good stuff. So I went in and definitely scrubbed all of the surfaces down and made sure to sanitize that area. And then I do go back into our shower and I did the same thing.
Okay, so now I'm moving on to the shower, and this I had to put a little elbow grease into because you can already see like the soap scum on the shower door. And so I actually went back in after I cleaned it because I realized that the soap scum was still there. And I did a lot of scrubbing. Like here I'm just sort of gently like wiping it down. But then I actually go back in and like thoroughly like scrub the door down. And you can actually see a huge difference, which was kind of funny. But um, I probably need to go in more like once a week and scrub the shower down because it is used a lot more than the bathtub is. But I just go in there and completely wipe down all of the walls and the shower door and just clean and sanitize it all up. kitchen you know I love having a huge huge kitchen but it is a catch-all for everything so everything that comes into the house goes to the kitchen counter and then mama gets to deal with everything so as you can see a whole bunch of clutter all over the counters and I try my best to keep everything off of the counters especially electronics but that doesn't always happen so I am emptying out the dishwasher and then I gotta go back and remove everything off of the counters and wipe them down and sterilize everything and then I'm gonna go back and sweep not sweep go back and use the Dyson and then mop the floor as well
a place to be, no one's waiting for me. I won't lie, I'm into you. Got like a million ideas what we could do. Cause I'm not gonna let you slip away. I won't waste this. There's something about the way you fix your eyes on me. I can't help myself fall in love. I go crazy. I, I, I. What you wanna do now? Should we head back to my place? Listen close, there's just something about your voice I think that every word you say to me is like poetry I just want you for my own It's really easy to tell that you're the best girl I've ever known I'm not gonna waste this I, I, I. What you wanna do now? Should we head back to my place? I, I, I. When you give me that smile, I think my heart's turned up the pace what we do if I get to be with you What you wanna do now What's to be afraid of When we're young, stupid, and in love Fall in love, I go crazy I, I, I. What you wanna do now? Should we head back to my place? I, I, I. When you give me that smile I think my heart's turning up the pace I don't care about what we do If I get to be with you I, I, I. What you wanna do now? What's to be afraid of? When we're young, stupid and in love What is an entire cleaning video without folding some laundry? <laughs> so of course I had to go in there and fold some laundry for you guys. Um, I don't know what was on the TV. My kids were watching something. Um, try to ignore that if you're able to. Uh, but I did have to go in and um, fold a couple of loads of laundry. Of course, we're a family of five, so we almost constantly have laundry going. But I only typically do one load of laundry or one day of laundry a week. It is so much easier for me to just go in and consistently load the washer, load the dryer, wait till everything is finished and fold it and all and put it all away at once. If I do a load of laundry a day, I will completely forget that there is a load in the washer. I will completely forget there's a load in the dryer and that it needs to be put away. And the stuff will just sit in the washer or dryer for days until I remember that it's sitting there. So for me to do it every day is just not really feasible. So I normally do on like a Monday or a Tuesday, unless my husband just absolutely needs something done, then I will wash his laundry on a Sunday. But to do it all, to do it all week long, I think it would drive me nuts. <laughs>
I'm finishing up the last bit of the kitchen, I'm just making sure that everything is off the counter and I will spray it down with some antibacterial solution and wipe it down really well. And then I go back in with my uh, Dyson, with my bare floor cleaner. I'm gonna vacuum it down and then I'm gonna go back in with my e-cloth as well and mop it really well. Once again, the spray that I'm using on these countertops is the Water, Vinegar, Thieves, and Lemon Oil. And um, I know that it's safe. It's actually because we have granite countertops. And I know that it's safe for the granite. Um, I know that it's not going to hurt them. When we moved into the house, the granite did have a couple of like pits. So I'm going to end up having to go back and seal it. It also has a couple of stains on it. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to get the stains out. I tried the baking soda mix where I covered it with um, some saran wrap and I left it on there for like 24 hours and that did not work unfortunately. So my counters are a little bit stained yellow. So if anybody has any suggestions of how to get stains out of granite countertops, um, that would be helpful. <laughs> if not, um, I'm really going to have to end up sealing these countertops. So also if you have any suggestions on that, please let me know. So call me anytime that you need a favor Call me anytime I can come and say take a few minutes at the very end of this video and probably throughout the whole video but just wanted to take a few minutes to thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my my not my shows taking the time to watch my videos and my channel um, my channel is very slowly growing which I know slow and steady wins the race but I'm just super excited I'm trying to put in so much work and 
really get into my channel and share with you guys my motivation and hopefully you guys can get some motivation from this as well. Um, it takes a lot to really film a video, uh, edit it, add music, add a voiceover and get it posted. Uh, but I'm really, I've been pretty successful getting one video out a week. I was trying to do two videos a week, but with the kids at home and you know, we've been homeschooling for the last three years. It's just been a really big challenge. So props to those that do this constantly. I don't know how you guys work it, but props to you if you do. Um, but yeah, I just want to really thank you guys for taking the time to watch my videos and just really show me the love. Um, I did want to mention that when I hit 2,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. So if you guys are interested to see what that's going to be, um, definitely share my channel and if there's somebody that you want to encourage to clean or you know whatever it might be send them my way um, share my video and just um, kind of help me reach my 2,000 subscribers that is like my goal for the rest of this year if I go beyond that I would be absolutely ecstatic but um, I just really really appreciate you guys everybody that clicks on these videos and tries to get some motivation um, just kind of lifting themselves up or you know whatever you need if you need something um, in the comments just please leave it in the comments and I try my best to you know talk with you guys and hang out in the comments and just really kind of build relationships I really enjoy talking to people and just having a fun relationship with my viewers it's really exciting to me to be able to you know hang out with people I guess on the internet that I don't know I grew up in the military so to become friends with people that I don't know personally is kind of my thing <laughs> um, I have tons and tons of friends all over the world so to meet new people in different areas is really cool um, but yeah I just want to thank you guys again so much um, your support means the world to me and I really appreciate you taking all of the time to watch my videos and share whatever you're enjoying and definitely leave in the comments what what else you want to see I do have a Costco video coming up and of course more cleaning motivation um, so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and um, I will see you guys very soon so beautiful and I'm so lucky to be yours